Gonna ship the little, <laughs> gonna ship gears here a little bit this morning. Um, an empty bench is the devil's workshop. I'm pretty sure it was Flava Flav that said that. But, um, this is where I get things fixed, and this is where sometimes I build things. And that's why, um, there's plastic chippery everywhere, there's wood chippery, there's paint. Welcome to the bench, everybody. Um, this is a, um, an Optimus Prime that I found the other day. And um, it is missing its smokestacks, so I'm going to put those back with uh, art supplies at some point. Um, and it's missing a tire, so I've got to find another one someday, but otherwise it's really complete. And um, I, I would like to thank our son for putting it together for me. It came in a robot form, <laughs> a very dilapidated, dangling in my hand, like it looked like I was holding a pile of parts. And I said, can you find your way to making this into a truck out of what it is? And he looked at me exasperatedly, rolled his eyes a little bit to let me know that it was an unwelcome thing. And then diligently went ahead and found his way through it for me, which I'm eternally grateful. Um, but this is what we're going to do today. This is what we're going to have fun with today. It is called a uh, Gunpla kit. Gunpla is the um, sort of condensed... Uh, wording for Gundam plastic play. Here's my mom calling in. Okay. Don't ever, 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 though, have to call your mom back. Always pick up the phone. All right, coffee's still a little warm. Let's try this again. Welcome to the Monkey Shine Lab Bench, everybody. And uh, what we're gonna do today is talk about this. This is a um, this is a Gundam kit. If you're not familiar with Gundam, um, it is a series that's been going since uh, the late '70s in Japan. It is a, it's got multiple different franchises in it and they make these plastic um, snap together uh, models of the different mobile suits, which is what this robot is called. For those of you who are uninitiated and don't know what they're looking at. Um, this is what they call an entry grade kit and I've been building these kits for quite a while but this is what they make to really kind of usher you into the hobby so I wanted to pick one of these up because I thought that the the, the, the deco work on it is just absolutely atrocious um, all the American flag horse crap is just so awful that I need to have it and um, this is a Target exclusive uh, from Gundam Breaker, which is their new video game, I think. So there's basically, Gundams were one of the first uh, big mega series that, you know, capitalized on um, merchandising and stuff like this. So these kits have been around for a really long time, but this is a brand new approach, which is that you don't need any nippers and you don't need any paints. And I have found that even with the ones that don't need any paint, that I've painted them anyway. Um, but we'll see what this thing is gonna require. 
because it says you don't need any of the traditional stuff to make it. And I think probably what's going to happen here is that, you know, obviously we're going to have to take a, uh, going to have to at least take a knife to it. Um, but let's take a look at what's inside the box. Um, one thing I really appreciate about Bandai, the way they package these, it is not an overall cellophane that holds the whole dang box together. It's two little uh, tabs of plastic that sort of cross over the box. Um, one, one from one direction and one from the other. And so this is the only thing that they need for security um, for their retail shops. And they're trying it here. That's a lot less than a overall thing of plastic. That's it's probably, you know, that's considerably less. They're not covering the whole box. Anyway, box art is fantastic. Um, on the side of the box, you get different poses and you get a front and back uh, and a description of what the American type um, is. Um, this one's in English. Uh, usually when you buy these, all the stuff all the way around is printed in Japanese. Um, and here's a little introduction to the Gundam Batalog if you're interested. Uh, warning, don't put any of this in your mouth. Um, and they're telling you what the, uh, what the stuff is in the packaging. That's interesting. That's cool. Okay. Um, and they have various scan things so that you can watch a special anime on your phone that involves the suit, I would assume. Um, but I love, 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 love Bandai's plastic kits. Um, as much as I preach about not loving plastic per se, these are so much fun. So, um, they usually come, um, you know, with these parts shrink wrapped into, uh, compartmentalized sets. The reason for that is so that if anything falls off of a runner, that it's a little easier to find. Although this is so color coded, this is gonna be super easy to figure out. Um, there looks to be four runners of parts and, um, I do, and the sticker sheet, always a sticker sheet. And then you've got your direct shown, which uh, are very, very, very simplistic. Um, but they uh, give you a runner layout and they tell you which parts are used, which are not used. Sometimes runners can be used for several different types of kits. Um, but I'm going to put that over there. I'm going to set these directions up. <coughs> and I'm going to get the runners out. Plastic to make sure nothing has fallen down in the bottom. Um, some people in a group that I am in on Facebook, when I told them I was going to build this, uh, and I said, you know, are they kidding about no nippers and no knives and stuff, and uh, the people in my club assured me that what they're doing with this kit is to make the runner pieces pop out with far less um, nub crud, pardon me, nub crud, 
That's a technical term, nub crud. Um, but I, I, the runners are each marked. So at, somewhere there is a little thing that says A3 on it. Um, this says A2, A3. Uh, we've got a B3, B4, B2. B2, B3, and B4, and an A2, and an A3. No A1. Denied. A1. Uh, but just looking over this, um, I could probably build this without having to... Not having to look at it very much. Um... B1, B3, and B4, okay, B1, just B1 with everything. Let's, uh, let's see what this is, shall we? Kick it in the egg, you. Yeah. So um, uh, it's a little bit of a speed build there for folks who don't want to sit around and watch the whole damn thing unfold. Um, what are my thoughts being a guy who's built a lot of these models now? Um, okay. Well, first off, it's standing next to the first one I ever built which is the same design. Um, it's what they call the RX-78 Mark II. Um, the differences in design, simple design, uh, are um, nothing short of amazing to me, really. The way this one went together versus the way that this older one went together was uh, almost night and day in terms of the engineering involved of holding the pieces to other pieces. There are no poly caps in these easy kits. Um, the whole kit seems to be made of a much more malleable plastic, and they've taken very special care to make sure that the um, nub points, even if you are just rough and punch the pieces out, which I tried several times, um, because they say you should use, you can use no tools. Um, yeah, that's possible. Most of the pieces did actually, when I wanted to try it, most of them did pop out without any, um, discernible damage, but the color pieces as always the stress marks are much more easy to find the nub points and so having a set of nippers simply to separate the parts from the runners though i didn't need to do any cutting of plastic really just use the nippers as sort of a a separator if you will it kind of pushed together 
and 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 pop the part off the runner as opposed to cutting through a gate. Um, it was a it was a very different experience for me. Um, I am used to building older kits which are made of plastic that, you know. They didn't have the engineering quite down yet. Bandai really seems to be getting their stuff together in terms of indoctrinating people into this hobby of making mobile suits from the series that they like. Um, this did not take me very long. The stickers look good. There was absolutely no sticker work on the head. The head went together in three or four pieces, which was crazy. Um, in this one, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces and just in the head alone. Um, I have not cut the safety flags off of the V-fin yet, but I probably will do so. Um, it's not a part of the original design. They kind of blunt these little pointy fins on the foreheads of the robots so that they're a little less dangerous. And it's still a pointy piece. Anyway, uh, final final verdict before painting is th this thing is a riot. I really enjoyed it. And in making this uh, model, I look forward to maybe someday doing these with my grandkids. And because you never know who's going to cotton to building a model kit, you know, uh, my son was into it for what seemed like a matter of months. It was probably a couple of years, but you know how time just flies by. We'll see if I can um, interest any of the kids into making some of these models and maybe checking out some of the animation behind it because I'm going to say this, Gundam is unlike any other anime series and you hear that about a lot of different anime series for a lot of different reasons but I'm gonna say this is that they touch on social and economic and um, global issues in that series that you just don't find adequately worked through in lots of other scripts so um, if you haven't checked out any of the Gundam series, I would encourage you to check out the original Gundam series. Um, it is available via streaming. If you go on YouTube, you, the uh, Bandai has an official Gundam channel where you can watch all of their content uh, almost all the time. They, they just they'll loop different series and so you can do a tremendous amount of viewing of this stuff on official uh, portals on YouTube. So check that out. And then also um, Netflix is, uh, they've got the first series in, in a three movie set, which is a great way to drink it in because they, they capsulize some of the stuff. Some of it gets long and, and a bit involved so if you're not up for that you can watch the series main points via their three different movies and then the fourth film Char's Revenge which um, kind of wraps the whole thing up um, thank you very much for sitting through this with me um, it's not what I intended to do on today's show but it just didn't seem like I was going to get today's show made so I went this direction instead if you like what you see here at monkey shine lab please hit like share and subscribe please do that whole thing if you're new to YouTube get yourself an account it's free and then you can subscribe to channels you like and get notifications of when we're able to waste your time next with this kind of thing um, my my final call on these things is step right up Go on out to Target and pick up one of these battle log kits because it is an excellent portal to the hobby. And um, you wind up with a really cool looking robot at the end of it. 
Um, take care, everybody, and thank you very much for coming out here to the Monkey Shine Lab. And we will see you all again with a different topic because even when I start filming them, they change. So I have no idea what's coming next. Do you? Stick around, everybody. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again right here on the Monkey Shine Lab.